Hello everybody, I'm Nick, and in this video I'm going to showcase a testing practice that is missing from the vast majority of .NET code bases out there. And if you go ahead and implement what you're going to see in this video, you're going to make it significantly easier for you to debug your tests, not only in the ID, which is relatively easy to see exactly how to debug it, but also in your CI pipeline, continuous integration. So as you try to deploy things and have them tested in your cloud environments, GitHub Actions, TeamCity, or whatever you're using, debugging them there will become significantly easier. Ever since I introduced this to my own tests and my own pipelines, the way I troubleshoot my problems with tests has completely changed, so I want to make this video to share with you. If you like our content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on dometrain.com. Okay, let me show you what I have here and explain the problem. So what I have over here is a customer's API. It's a controller-based API, and we have a CRUD REST API where we have create, get, update, delete endpoints. Now, what you need to know about this API is that we are using Postgres as the database. We have some services. We have entity framework. And that's about it. We're not going to stand too much on the API, but what I want to show you is how we would integration test this API. So I went ahead and I created this integration test project, and then I created some integration tests. So I have the customer endpoint tests over here, and I'm only testing the create endpoint. So as a sample, I have the create should create customer when details are valid. The way I'm generating my details for the customer is using Bogus. So I'm generating realistic looking fake data. And then I'm using the web application factory over here, as you can see, and I'm replacing things like the database to one that I run every time with my tests using test containers. This technique we've seen in the past. And actually, if I go ahead and I run this test, as you're going to see, over here, what's going to happen is in Docker, a container with my database will spin up just from my tests. As you're going to see over here, my test will run. And as you're going to see, it's going to pass. And then in the end, this container will be disposed. And if we wait for a couple of seconds right now, it's going to just disappear. Here you go. Now, I've shown this technique so many times and I have a video on it and a dedicated course on integration testing on it on Dome Train. So I'm not going to stand too much on it. What I want to stand on is what happens when things go wrong. For example, imagine that something breaks on this create endpoint. Now, because this is an integration test, all I have to call that endpoint is actually the HTTP client that allows me to access this in-memory running API or version of my API. It's the real API, but we're just replacing some dependencies. In this case, the database. We run one locally in Docker. Now, here's why this is problematic. If during the operation of create, for example, something goes wrong. I have some form of exception. Now I'm just going to manufacture uh, a fake exception, but anything that could break the flow and have an exception be caused would cause the same issue. So we're going to say boom over here, and then I'm going to go back to my integration test. Now, if I go ahead and I run this test, watch what happens. Yes, the test will fail once it starts, but also what I have here is the failure giving me a JSON exception as the reason for a failure. So S is an invalid start of a value. This is because the way the body is being serialized, because this is an unexpected failure, doesn't know how to be converted into JSON because it's not JSON. And then you end up with this, which doesn't really tell you anything. And what you have to do is, well, if this is your CI pipeline, you know nothing. This tells you nothing about what failed in my API. So you don't know how your API reacted. And the way to troubleshoot it, you probably have two ways. The first one is obviously debug in your ID. So you would go here, you stick a breakpoint, you would go here and say debug, and then you would go in your ID, try to resolve this. You would say, okay, what is going on? Database is running. We hit the endpoint, step over this. And as you're going to see, I will check exactly what exception was thrown and I'll be able to take it from there and troubleshoot it. The alternative is that because this is a real API, what's going on is any login provider you have in your API will be used. So if you use something like Logly or Datadog or any provider, Elasticsearch or whatever, those logs will be sent to the provider. And what you have to do is try to use those logs to debug exactly what happened to your test, which is very, very tedious and hard if your application is running on a CI environment. So what I'm going to do is actually show you how you can solve all that. And I could show you the hard way of implementing everything manually, but we don't have to do that because uh, Meziantu or Gerald Barret, which is one of my favorite uh, bloggers for .NET, I'm going to put a link in the description, has actually made a library for this. 
Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a massive six-hour course on Dome Train called From Zero to Hero, Test-Driven Development in C-Sharp. That course will take you from knowing nothing about testing in TDD and get you to a point where you fully understand the concept and you have all of the technique and knowledge to apply it on any C-Sharp code base. It is authored by Guy Ferreira, who has an excellent YouTube channel, link in the description, but he's also someone who I work with personally in my previous company, and I can 100% vouch for him. He really, really knows the topic, and he actually changed the way I I see the topic as well and the way I teach it. I believe it's a must know for any developer and the first 500 of you can use discount code TDD20 and click the link in the description to claim it at checkout. These do tend to go very, very quickly and I don't renew them later. So if you want to buy it, then buy it now. Now back to the video. And the library is called mesiantu.extensions.logging.xunit. We're going to go ahead and add this NuGet package. Now, what does this NuGet package add? Well, ultimately what we want to do is actually use the logs of the application, so capture those logs and have them be output as part of our tests. Because if we can do that, then as our tests are running, we're going to see logs about our applications and about our application failing. And this means I can go ahead and then troubleshoot it in the console without having to go into a third party provider. So let me show you what we can do. Now, as part of my web application factory implementation, I can go here and say builder.configure logging. And this gives me access to the login configuration. Now, what I like to do in my integration tests, because if you are not doing this for your integration tests, you're basically wasting money because you're pushing logs you don't need into a cluster that doesn't need to store them in any way. So what I wanna do first is say clear providers. So clear all the providers configured in my application for my tests. This then allows me to go in and say services.add singleton and add an I logger provider and the provider I want to add is a new X unit logger provider which is coming from that library we just added and what we need to pass in here is the I test output helper which I can get by injecting it into my test class so I'm going to say private read only I test output helper I'm going to give it a name and then inject it through the constructor which is as you can see over here then take that plug it in here and then what that's going to do is remove all the logs from the application and then pipe them all into our service. So if I do that for our test now and I go ahead and I say run, as the test is running and as you're going to see in my screen, we're going to start writing that output in the console. So the test still failed, though we still failed with a JSON exception or whatever. But now if I scroll all the way down, what you're going to see is that, for example, migrations executed as part of my application starting, and then we can see exactly what happened. We had an exception boom on the controller level over here. And that allows me to go ahead and see that, oh yeah, something happened here and I know exactly what happened as part of the log of my test. So I don't have to go in any other platform or anything. Everything is here and that's so, so valuable. It actually gives you the full stack trace and exactly what happened. In fact, I can actually configure exactly what I want here and how far it goes in terms of how much is printing because I can customize completely what is going to be written. For example, I maybe don't want the minimum level to be information. Maybe I want to be warning, for example. Well, I can do that. Then I can go ahead and say, hey, run this. And then I'm going to get the exception and everything associated with that exception. You can go even further. You can do something like add filter and you can say, you know what? Just pipe through everything. And you can go as low as debug if you need to, or even trace, which isn't recommended because trace will actually write some confidential things uh, down there as well. So I don't recommend trace, but maybe debug should be enough if you really, really need to. However, keep in mind that this will slow down your execution of the test because writing to the console will have an impact in performance because it's an IO operation. It's not going to be that bad. And integration tests in general are a bit slower than, you know, unit tests. But this can really, really help you debug your applications. And if I go ahead and I run this once again with everything configured to be filtered and written, then as you're going to see, I'm not going to get just the warning, but I'm also going to get things like the iService provider created, some more minute details, plus all the details about the connection with the database, DB command, everything is now written here. That's probably too verbose. You probably don't want to have it to be that verbose, but you can configure it in any way you want. But now I want to know from you, did you know about this approach and have you done something about it? Leave a comment down below, let me know.
Well, that's all I have for you for today. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, keep coding.